Now, um, what are some of the most important characteristics you think a man should look for in a woman? There are so many characteristics. For me, I had height was one of them. I needed um, because uh, somebody no at least taller, at least tall, somebody tall. Okay. Yeah, because you're looking at the offsprings eventually, <laughs> your children. So you want your children to not be stout. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, in my requirements, it's somebody who knows and understands God. That was one of my key requirements because okay. I've seen um, people that lacked the knowledge of, of God, um, people that were meeting others in, in the discos, in the clubs, and things like that. And when they lacked that component, it was very difficult to form uh, a family. Um, any conflict, there will be no basis for. Uh, you know, reconciliation. Because once you have that godly foundation, reconciliation becomes easy. Yeah, there's a there's difference. forgiveness. There's there's understanding of those terms. You know, yes. there's rebuilding the relationship. We are not perfect. You know, we are not perfect, and things in the relationship do happen. Um, you may be even suspected, or you find. Um, Another girl that just falls in love, knowing the, she even knows that you are married and just well, tries so to come in, yeah. into that relationship. And those bring about issues. You know, sometimes you may not be, as a man, you, know, you may not be very vigilant. And you may smile, give a hug back, things that will show That's their true. wife like there's, there's something happening. You know, and those are issues that happen. So if you are true to yourself, um, the quality that you look for in a woman, like for me, okay. somebody who understands God. And everywhere you go, you find that. And you find people that don't care about God everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Maybe, unless, unlike Africa, but in most countries like Europe, you find people that are, you tell you point blank, I'm, I'm atheist, I, I don't know uh, about your God. I'm an atheist, and I'll do what I want upon my own rules. And if you meet such, it's very difficult. Yeah, in terms of culture, like I was always say, uh, women, uh, a man molds the woman the way you want the woman to be. So you not find a picture perfect woman, but you can mold her into the culture you want her to be, the kind of respect. So you mold and then you mature together. So, uh, but drunkards, that's a no-go. If a woman loves drinking alcohol too much, for me that's out. What about the casual drinker? Casual drinker is fine because that, that has control. Because um, a drunk woman is a danger to society, the tender to society. In general, yeah. In general yeah. she can do anything. Anything can happen and the excuse is already there. I was intoxicated. I was drunk. And if you can't bear and live with that, yeah. So for me I had those uh, qualities. Not a drunkard. At least knows God. He's beautiful. Of course. <laughs> and beautiful in, in, in my case at uh, many dimensions. It was not only beauty, physical. Uh, physical beauty, but also a beautiful brain. And uh, yeah, and a beautiful heart. Because a person who is able to learn, a person who can get, uh, who has self criticism, a person who can uh, adjust and flexible in the mind then you are good to go. Um, let's talk about another topic, fatherhood. Yes. I don't know if it was recently or never, but it was Father's Day, some... No, it's going to be Father's Day, I think <laughs> the next Sunday or so. Yeah, I'm sure you're expecting a gift. Um, not, not as much as I give <laughs> gifts on Mother's Day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's the thought which counts. It's the thought which counts. Yes. I'm wondering, do you believe in corporal punishment yourself? Well, um, I was 
raised, you know I'm an African. <laughs> I was battered. <laughs> I was disciplined in the right <laughs> way. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, I hated it then. But then when I grew up, I realized without that corporal punishment, I would have grown into somebody else. Now, um, um, it's, it's, it's beautiful, I can actually ask the parent this. Yeah. Definitely a significant chunk of African parents beat. Yeah. Now, there are some situations where I feel they just... I wouldn't call it beating, I would call it discipline. Okay, we'll use the more politically yes. correct term, discipline. discipline. Yes. But there are times when I feel parents, you know, just give their children a high note of frustration. The workplace didn't go well for them, they didn't expect their money. And a small discrepancy by the children, he just gets scanned. Do you think that's fair? Have you ever like, spanked your children out of frustration? No, no. That is a no no. Okay. Uh, for me, what I've grown up to understand is that um, a disciplined child is actually pride. Uh, I take pride when when my kids visit other other places or other parents, and I get praises. The, the parents will be telling us, "Oh, your children are so well disciplined. They are well behaved. They did this. They did that," and that shows that our method, our methods of discipline, them are working. So the most important thing for me is is respect for the elders. Mm -hmm. Um, that is key, you know, we were brought up in that way. Um, respect for the parents, uh, there's not any, any time that a child is going to answer harshly to, to, to the parents. But, but, but or, shouldn't the child defend himself? Because sometimes a, a child defending themselves is perceived to be rudeness. Let them defend themselves in society, let them defend themselves elsewhere they're being attacked but when the parents are dealing with the children there's no attack <laughs> so i wouldn't call that defense in most in most cases what you want to avoid is that children pick they're like a sponge mm -hmm. they pick bad behaviors from elsewhere very quickly even from television mm -hmm. especially the biggest challenge like for our societies the u.s uh, Film, uh, cinematography and mm -hmm. the, the movies. Mm -hmm. Because in the US movies, they want to portray children who are disrespectful as being cool. <laughs> children yeah. who can, you know, set a trap for the parents to fall into and maybe something falls or the parent falls and they laugh at that <laughs> as being cool, which is which is absurd for for our culture because that is totally indis so in our case is to not really shield is to re-educate the children mm -hmm. in as much as you cannot isolate them from watching those movies they're going to watch them and they are going to pick those as sponges mm -hmm. and they were going to test you as a parent you know in such behavior or answering or banging the door in their room or doing things like that and you tell them look even if you watch this this is not right this is not so it's, 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 it's like debugging, because the, the role of a parent now is like you have a child and external forces are throwing in bugs, mm -hmm. and all you're doing is debugging. And that is very key to explain to them mm -hmm. that this behavior is not right, uh, biblically or as, as a Christian, mm -hmm. and even as an African child. Because in our upbringing, respect, is one of the key things in the African culture. Now, let, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Assume maybe your son comes to you and tells you, Daddy, I'm gay. What's your response to that? Uh, my response to that would be um, shocking because <laughs> initially we've instilled, not uh, overlooking the whole situation that is happening, mm -hmm. we've, we've explain to the children <coughs> from way at their early age because we were in South Africa at some point when I was doing my PhD mm -hmm. and the kids could see these things and they would ask why is that man with a man? Why are they kissing? Mm -hmm. Why is that lady kissing another lady? I'm 
we would explain to them that this is this is the situation here. Um, but then we give them the Christian background to say, in our Christian background, this is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So as a Christian, um, you are a boy, you are going to marry a woman, and biologically, these are the functions that God designed you to have. You have a penis, she has this, and that is the, the purpose of this design. Mm -hmm. That's God's design. Oh. And then your other body parts have got their duties as well. Yeah. Now let me ask a question and perhaps this is going into an African current. Yeah. Uh, specifically in Zambia, if the girl child gets pregnant, yeah. now nine out of ten okay, that's that's too much. But significantly, yeah, there are one of three options. She gets married to the man. Yeah. That's non negotiable. Yeah. The parents are okay with it, which generally this only happens in a modern context. Yeah. Or she is disowned. Now, what's the logic between forcing a woman to get married to a man mm -hmm. and disowning her? Why do Zambian parents choose to take these two drastic solutions? You know, it's a pity. Um, after, after traveling in many countries, I realized that um, our culture has pluses and minuses. One of the minuses that our culture, our African culture has, is that it does not give the freedom for children to date and um, meet with other people. So that freedom not to date brings about secrecy. Uh, people, I remember uh, I brought home my girlfriend. <laughs> Innocently, naively, and to me, it was normal. <laughs> I had a girlfriend, I brought her home, introduced her to my mother. You got stopped? No, <laughs> I introduced her to my mother, and my mother was there cleaning, you know, pumpkin leaves, and she was also helping. Now, when my brothers came, and they found that uh, my girlfriend is there seated, they told me, no, this is taboo. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. It's illegal, it's blood, it's a case, it's so many things I got confused. But then when I went to Russia, I was shocked to find that as early as 15, 16 years old, if they two like each other, they are encouraged to come to the parents so that the parents know what's going on. What's going on. First of all, and they must also know the character. So they can guide the girl to say, no, that boy you are with, Thing is not a good character. So they will give periodic guidance, but they would encourage them dating, which is which builds up understanding of male-female relationships because they're quite complex. It's a co it's a complex um, mm -hmm. scenario, and our culture denies us of that. Mm -hmm. So you end up. That's why we find that three quarters of our marriages are after pregnancy and uh, in Zambia, in Africa mostly, uh, three quarters of the marriages are after pregnancy, which is um, not a case in Europe. In Europe, pregnancy comes after marriage. You know? and, and that's the scenario that we, we must look into. Because if you allow dating and uh, give that freedom to date, people even become more careful because you know the boy already, mm -hmm. you know the girl already. Mm -hmm. Anything happens, no one is going to deny. So they become responsible. For me, I was thinking it's the opposite. I was thinking the secrecy, the banning, the stopping of this is effective. is effective and helps. Mm -hmm. But it does the opposite because in secrecy, you meet at night and what you do at night, <laughs> you know, you end up uh, doing, the doing the things that are not supposed to. But then, the European setup, especially the Russian setup, they allow them to date, and they date during the day. <laughs> you know, they would come. <laughs> the yes, they would come home. They would sit in the kitchen where the parents know they are. They would chat, and then the boy would go. It's a controlled environment. <laughs> <laughs> come and during the day. <laughs> yes, because because I tried to bring my girl during the day. And I, I was castigated for that. So I ended up following the routine. 
<laughs> it's in the night now. You sneak out in the night. <laughs> which which is bad. You can't even enjoy, you know, chatting. And that female male relationship takes time to learn and develop the skill to understand the female um, behaviors, their moods and all that. And that makes you become a gentleman. The moment you know and understand how to converse with the females, then you become a gentleman.